Hello. It's good to see you. Today, we are going to be making a Kentucky butter cake. A Kentucky butter cake. Now, you don't have to have Kentucky butter to make it. That's just what it's called. I found this recipe online a few days ago, and it just sounded so yummy, and the picture looked really yummy, and I just wanted to try making it. So the ingredients are super simple. I would think pretty much no matter where you are, you should be able to find these. I know sometimes when I make, when I, when I do, uh, when I cook things, bake things, sometimes there are ingredients that you may not have available, but this one looks really super simple. Um, the, oh, I actually had to go out and buy something. I had to go get a, a bunt pan. They call it a tube pan in, uh, in the recipe. So, and the, the label on the inside calls it a fluted cake pan. It says you need a 10 inch tube pan. Um, this one says it's 9.4. I think it's close enough. I found it at Walmart for, I think it was $11 for this little, little pan. I've always just ever heard it called a bunt pan. Bunt, not butt. It's not shaped like a butt, although that'd be really funny if we <laughs> you make a little butt, a butt cake. That'd be, we should do a butt cake sometime. That'd be funny. I don't know what kind of icing you'd put on it. I guess it depends on the situation, whatever the, the occasion is. Let's just stop right there and get back to this. Um, so it's a bunt pan, but the recipe calls it a, uh, a tube pan. It says you need a 10 inch tube pan. Walmart had one that was 10 inches, but it was $22 and I didn't want it. I don't want to pay $22. So for half that price, I got this one. I figure it's good enough. So if you don't have an exactly a 10 inch pan, if yours is 9.4, it's probably fine. You need a cup of butter, softened. So a cup of butter is gonna be two sticks. This is for the cake. I mean, they call it a butter cake. So you have to know there's gonna be a lot of butter in it. There's butter in the, in the glaze as well. You need two cups of sugar, four large eggs at room temperature, two teaspoons of your vanilla extract. I have some great value pure vanilla extract here. This is just some I had on hand, it doesn't matter. You can use any kind. Um, you need three cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder. Now I use Rumford aluminum-free baking powder. There are plenty of brands out there of baking powder. Um, this is just the one my mom always used, so this is, this is just what I use, Rumford baking powder. You also need a teaspoon, uh, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now baking soda and baking powder are not the same thing. So you can't use them inter interchangeably. In this recipe, you actually use both. So I have a, a container of great value baking soda that looks like it was gnawed open by a rat. That was me, I was the rat. You need a half a teaspoon of salt. Um, oh, and a cup of buttermilk. The buttermilk's in the refrigerator. I did have to go buy buttermilk. I didn't have any of that. And then you have, to go over the top of this cake, you have a butter sauce. And for that, you need a cup of sugar, half a cup of butter, cubed. So you're gonna need another stick. You're gonna use three sticks of butter in this recipe. A quarter cup of water. It's about the only healthy thing in this recipe. One and a half teaspoons of almond extract. I have almond flavor. I'm hoping that's okay. Um, when I was at the store, all they had, they had this, which was only about $3. And then they had this enormous thing of almond extract that was like $11. I didn't want all that. I went for the almond flavor. Um, it says it's 100% rich flavor, so you know it's good. I figured that'll be fine. It says here that McCormick has been trusted for over 125 years. I don't think they'd lie to me. I mean, it says it's 100% rich. That's probably fine. It does call for almond extract, but I didn't want to buy it. It was like a, a little jug and like, I don't need, I will never use all that. I won't even use all of this. But it does, I'll have the recipe in the description too, so you don't have to memorize any of this. You also need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract for the butter uh, sauce as well. 
but you're actually going to need three and a half teaspoons of, of vanilla extract total. I should have plenty. I have at least a half a container. And it looks it looks really simple and it looks really yummy. So that that's all the ingredients. Um, nothing nothing weird. Nothing exotic. Nothing no Velveeta this time. <laughs> nothing crazy. You may just have to get one of these uh, tube pans or fluted cake pans or butt pans, whatever you want to call it. You can get a butt pan. You could do this as a butt pan, a butt cake, a Kentucky butter, a Kentucky butter butt cake. We're going to be poking holes in it. So if it's a butt cake, you're going to have fun poking holes in your little butt cake. <laughs> you poke holes in it for the, the uh, sauce to go down into after the cake cools off. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and start combining all the, the ingredients to make our Kentucky butter cake. We are all set to start mixing our stuff. This is exciting, but we cannot start before I show you my bowls. Look at these right here. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that. These and they nest together so nicely. I have four bowls here. The smallest one is this pretty kind of a pinkish color and then blue and then sort of a lime green and orange. They kind of matches my nails a little bit. <laughs> yes, these are from Zack Designs, Z-A-K exclamation point. I found these in an antique store, but they're not actually antiques. But they have this beautiful design on them. Look at that. It's like little flecks. This one reminds me of a robin's egg. Just, I guess the, well, a robin's egg is usually not quite that blue, but it has all the little, the little flecks of color in it. So to mix this stuff for this cake, I think we're going to use the largest one. Usually this is the one we go with. So we're going to be mixing everything in here. Now it says the first thing we have to do is take our butter and our sugar add them in here now you want to cream together the butter and the sugar the butter is supposed to be room temperature so it's kind of soft you can tell these came out of two different packs this stick is a little darker than this one but it's it's fine it's just this pack I think this one was a little bit older but it's still good okay So I'm going to be using my electric mixer to mix these together. So we have our butter there and our sugar, lots of sugar. Oh, lots of sugar. Oh, that's a sugar cloud. Okay, I'm going to be using my mixer. I'm going to mix this together and then we will go to the next step. All right, it's, it's light and fluffy. Look at that. Ooh, it took quite a bit of mixing with my electric mixer to get it there, but we got it there and it stands up. Okay, now what we have to do, we have to add our eggs one at a time, uh, beating it together in between the additions. Ooh, it's leaking. Look, it's already excited. We got some coming out at the tip already. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on. So I'm going to add one now. Bloop. Ooh, that was jarring. Okay. We'll go mix this one in and then we'll come back and do the second one. Okay. That's, that's the addition of one egg. Now we're going to do the second. Look, it's like three balls. Do you know how you snow guy had three balls? I don't think I've ever mentioned that on this channel. Bloop. Now it's just two. And that will mix in that one. There it is after the second egg was added. Still pretty, look at it. Let's add the third egg. Oop. <laughs> I love doing that. Okay, now I'm going to take my little hand mixer and mix in that one. Oh, I got a mockingbird going to town right outside of my window. He's making all the noises. He was doing a car alarm a minute ago. <laughs> It sounds like a bunch of birds out there. It's just, it's just the one. <laughs> um, can't, he's not quite as loud at the moment. So that's three. And now we're going to add in our fourth and final egg. 
to this mix. Bloop. Okay, so I'm going to go use my little mixer and mix that one in, and that will be all the eggs. Okay, for the next step, I think I'm going to have to move up to my big Tupperware bowl. This was my mom's. It's a, it's a, just a general purpose Tupperware container. Um, I have to mix together this here, this mixture here, with my flour. Here I have the flour, baking powder, which I, I just put a little baking powder in here. That's the baking powder. Baking soda, right there. And the salt is right there. So first off, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the flour in this big bowl. One Tupperware dish to another. This is just a smaller little Tupperware container. Okay, and I have a whisk to combine this stuff. Here's our baking powder. I'm just gonna shake that over the top. Like that baking soda. Shake that over the top salt and just shake that over the top. And a whisk is really good for combining dry ingredients like this. All right, that's got, that's all combined there. That's all of our dry ingredients. Now it says we want to combine this with the, the egg and the cheese mixture here. We want to combine it alternately with buttermilk mixing after each addition. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process. That's why I wanted to use a larger bowl because th this is a lot in here and I didn't want to try to mix it all in that bowl because I already have a lot in there. So um, it says to add it alternately with the buttermilk mixing after each addition. So I wonder if they mean I'm supposed to put all of this in here and mix that and then add the buttermilk and mix it. That's the way I take it. So, oh, it's so fluffy. Look how fluffy and spongy it is. <laughs> it has eggs and sugar and butter. All that goodness in there. Okay, I'm just gonna stir it by hand for a minute. Makes me think of my mother's biscuits. She used to make biscuits in a big bowl like this. What she would do is she would have the flour down in the bowl and she just stored it in here and kept the lid on it. And that's how she would store her flour. And then she would wash her hands and take her fist and make a hole in the flour. And she would pour in, she didn't measure anything. She would pour in some either buttermilk or sweet milk and a little bit of oil, whatever kind of oil she happened to have, cooking oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, whatever. And so she would have it in the middle. So it's like this, this hole in the flour. And then she would take a butter knife and right around the edge where the flour met the milk and the oil, the oil would just kind of gloop up in the middle of the milk. She'd take a butter knife and just make little circles and just go around and around and slowly mix in some of that flour with the, the milk and the oil. She didn't add any salt or anything else to it. Mix it, mix it, mix it until she ended up with just a loose dough and then she would take her hands and just sort of form the ball of dough right in the middle. And then when she was done, she'd just scoop it out and take little pieces and roll them into balls and put them in the pan and bake them. I watched her do that many times. Well, this is mixing pretty well without a mixer. Look at it. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> I know somebody out there's twitching right now. They got a they got a little tick going on in their eye and they want to scream at me. But there's a pinned comment, so they they can't. Okay. I'll hit it with the mixer. I'll be right back. 
Okay, there we have that. Now we're going to add in our buttermilk. Just a little container with our buttermilk in it. Okay. And we're going to mix that into this big glob of goodness. <laughs> a glob of goodness. Two words that don't seem to go together. It reminds me of that line in Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> I love that movie. Where Robin Williams, you know, he's Mrs. Doubtfire and he walks into, I forget what it was, Stu, you know, his ex-wife's new uh, love interest. He walked into some, I can't remember now what it was, something of Stu's, his, it wasn't his house, I don't remember, she, but she walks in and goes, oh, it reeks of taste. <laughs> It reeks of taste. I love that line. I've used it myself. Oh, it reeks of taste. Oh, look how well that mixes. That's just so nice. realized I forgot the vanilla. <laughs> We're going to add it now. Everybody calm down. I was supposed to add it after the eggs, but I didn't see that. It's all right. We're going to mix it in now. So I was just sitting here. That's why I like to have all my ingredients sitting out to see if I've forgotten something. That way I make sure not to forget anything. And I'm looking at it and looking at the recipe like I don't see where that's added. I missed it a few steps back. All right, I'm going to take this and hit it again with the mixer. Make sure it's nice and combined. All right, there we have our mix. Oh, I got to admit, I did taste. I licked the beaters when I finished. This is good. This is so good. I don't, I've been licking bowls and beers since I was a kid and I haven't died yet. Okay, so now I have my little tube pan here, my bunt pan, whatever. And you're supposed to grease it and flour it. I'm using this Pam baking made with flour, perfect release, which sounds like something from Idiocracy. Um, and it even has a picture of a little bunt cake. Look at it. It's like there's a perfect release on that bunt cake. It's glaze. So I, I used this instead of um, greasing it and flouring it. I just sprayed the whole inside of it with that. So now we have to take this and get it in there. Which is sort of awkward. I'm trying to distribute it. And once you get it in there, of course, you can spread it around. Oh, it smells so good. It does. It smells yummy. This is a big bowl. <laughs> okay. I'm going to spread this around a little bit. Now you have to bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until a toothpick, toothpick. I, yeah, I've got said tooth cake, until a toothpick inserted in the middle of the cake comes out clean. And it says that that's going to be 55 to 70 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and bake it. And then we'll bring it back and see how it turned out. Oh my goodness, look at it. It's so pretty. Oh, it turned out nice. Look at that. Oh, and it smells 
so good. Oh, it smells wonderful. You can smell all that vanilla. You can smell the butter. Like, oh my gosh, it smells so good. So you want to let this cool for about 10 minutes and then you take a knife. It says to take a knife and insert it around the edges and the tube here. Um, this one's kind of wiggly, like it's not f a flat surface, it's a fluted pan. It's cooled a little bit. I'm just taking this little silicone spatula and just kind of doing like that. I'm just gently massaging it and convincing it to kind of release from the pan. And the thing I like about these is that they're flexible, so it kind of conforms to the shape of the pan a little bit more. I don't know about the tube though. It's a little bit too wide for that. Okay. So you want to let it cool for about two min oh, sorry, 10 minutes. And then we're going to invert it. And hopefully invert it and drop it in one piece onto this cooling rack with wax paper over the top of it. So I'm going to get a few, give it a few more minutes and then we will invert it. That's always, I always get nervous before I do that. I'm always afraid it's going to fall apart. We'll let it cool a little bit and then we'll flip it. Okay, it has been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up right here. Right here I have my cooling rack with the wax paper on top of it. And now it's time for the moment of truth. We are going to invert this somehow. <laughs> and we are gonna plop it on here. Well, let's see. I got a hold of it, I think. Sort of. Looks like a giant chocolate donut. <laughs> That's the prettiest thing I've seen today. Look at it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh, and it smells so good. It just popped right out of there. I have to say that um, that flower spray that I put in here worked wonderfully. Look at that. Nothing stuck. It was made by Pam, and it was a cooking spray with flour in it, and it was so much easier than flouring. Because whenever I butter and flour a pan, I never, I never get it quite right. But this was perfect. Look at that; it's beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and get our sauce ready. We are now going to make the glaze, the butter sauce. So what we want to do is combine the sugar, butter, and water in a small saucepan. This saucepan is very excited. It never gets used for anything. So it is super excited about this step. Okay, water. Here's my butter. It's sort of cubed. Water, butter, and sugar. There's the butter. And it says to go ahead and put everything in there. And we're gonna combine and melt all of this good stuff. I just have it on medium heat. We're not going to add the almond or the vanilla extract right now. The first thing we have to do is completely melt all of these ingredients together. And it doesn't matter if your cubes of butter are not perfect because you're going to put them in here and they're just going to dissolve anyway. Just 
They look like dumplings. <laughs> okay, they look like little dumplings. They're getting smaller. <laughs> You probably don't have to stir it non-stop, but as I've mentioned before, you know, when you're when you're cooking in a video, or for me, I don't know about other people, but for me, if I'm cooking in a video, I feel weird just standing here and not doing anything, like, or just watching this little pot, you know? It feels weird, so I just keep stirring it. Plus, I don't want to take a chance on anything burning or something. I don't know. Plus, if I wander off, it might it might seem weird to you. So I can't go anywhere. So I might as well stir it. They're getting tiny. Look at them getting small. Let's look at that instruction list. I just want to make sure. We want to heat it in just until the butter is melted and the sh sugar is resolved. Dissolved. Okay, so we want to do it just until the butter is melted. We're almost there. It's getting very, very close. And then as soon as we have all the butter dissolved, we're going to remove it from the heat and stir in the extracts. I have those ready to go. Okay, almost there. Okay, turn that off. I'm gonna remove it from the heat. Just put it right here. And here we have the almond. I'll put that in there. That's one and a half teaspoons of almond and, ooh, look at that, and vanilla extract. Let's stir that in. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It smells wonderful. It smells so good. Oh, my stars, it smells fantastic. All right, now it is ready to be poured over the cake into the little holes of the cake. So let's go pour it. All right, now, according to the instructions, you're supposed to poke holes in the top of your of your cake. I still don't have anything good to poke holes with. I'm just gonna, I found a spoon. I'm just gonna poke holes in it with my spoon. <laughs> it's working. It's pulling out little chunks of cake that I'm not cool with. Okay, now it says that you're supposed to, you're supposed to spoon a quarter of a cup of the sauce over the top of the cake. Oh, this, this, this smells really good. I don't know. I'm just going to use this spoon and see you want it to go down in the holes. Jethro keeps making noise with that truck. He won't get any sauce. He won't get any cake. One of my neighbors has this super loud pickup truck and he loves to gun it right up there for some reason. His mama didn't hug him enough as a child. Bless his heart. That's gotta be it. He's spending his adult life subconsciously looking for attention. I don't know if that's a quarter of a cup or not. I 
I'm trying to hit the holes. <laughs> This little spoon did a good job of poking little holes in the cake. Okay, I'm going to say that's a quarter of a cup. Okay, so you want to let that completely absorb. And then you want to repeat it twice. So, even more. I'm just going around and around and drizzling like that. And as this sauce cools, it thickens a little bit. Okay. Oh, it's so shiny. Doesn't it look good? Add a little bit more. Now, we want to poke holes in the sides of this cake, and then we're going to brush sauce into the sides of this cake. Poke holes in the side, it says. I'm just going around with the spoon again. Spoon is clean. Okay. I'm getting crumbs everywhere. Okay. Now for this we're gonna use the brush. I just have a little like a little basting brush here. And I'm just gonna brush the sides. Trying to get some of that the sauce down into those holes with the basting brush. Oh, it smells so good. It really does. It's dripping all over the place. And so yeah, I use that 9.4 inch fluted tube pan and it did just fine. I didn't change the amounts of the ingredients or anything. cool completely and then we get to cut into it and see what it tastes like okay we are ready to try the Kentucky butter cake look what's oh, heavy look at that I'm always afraid when these times I'm gonna go pick up something and I'm just gonna drop it <laughs> but not today look at that I wish you could smell this. It's beautiful. So it has cooled completely. It said you should let it cool completely before you try it. And it's been hard waiting for this thing to cool. Let me tell you. It's gorgeous. Look at it. Oh my gosh. I didn't know if the glaze would, would stay. Like I didn't know if it would turn white as it cooled off. But it really didn't. It's just kind of clear. You can't really tell except that it's on the plate. Okay. We'll cut into this thing. All right, we're gonna try a little bite of this. Oh, it's so smooth. I don't want a big piece because I'm thinking it's gonna be 
pretty rich. Okay, there we go. Mm. Oh, look at that. It just looks like pound cake. Basically, it does. It looks like it looks like pound cake, but it doesn't really smell like pound cake. I don't know. It's something about it's a little bit different. I'll try part of this outer part here. Oh my word. That glaze sauce stuff you put on the top is wonderful. I love that almond flavor in it. It's really nice. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. That is so good. The outer part has a nice little bit of a crust. Not really a crust, but I like the way the outer part tastes. It's really nice. Now let's try the inner part. Look at that. Mmm. It tastes a lot like pound cake, but it's not quite as it's not quite as dense as pound cake. It's a little bit lighter than that. So if you don't like the heaviness of pound cake, you might like this one. And you saw the ingredients. It was so simple. It's just basic stuff. You might have a lot of this stuff already. The only thing I didn't have was the almond, the almond extract and buttermilk. I did have to go buy those. And the pan. I didn't have the pan. But now I have it, I can make I can make as many of these as I want to. Mmm. That is fantastic. That is so good. And Evie is talking to me and she agrees. You want some? She's not going to say answer me now. Mm. And then you can see here where we poke the little holes in it. And that, that sauce stuff kind of gets down into the cake a little bit. It is so, oh my gosh, this is so good. Look at that. It smells fantastic. It ended up, um, I ended up baking it almost exactly one hour. At the one, it was pretty much right at 60 minutes and it was done. But every, every oven is different. So, in mine it took almost exactly one hour to bake this. I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Sometimes when I, when I cut off a little bit of something to try, I only eat like half of it. I'm very happy to eat all of this. Mm. That is so good. And the sauce to me almost tastes like honey. It has this taste to it, kind of like, kind of like honey. It's beautiful. It is so good. Honey would be good on this too. If you didn't want to make a sauce and you just wanted to put some, heat up a little bit of honey and pour it on there, that'd probably be pretty good too. I don't know though that honey would get down in there like this stuff does. Like down into the little holes, probably not. Mmm. This is spectacular. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I love this cake. I love this cake. Kentucky butter cake. Oh my heavens, you've got to try this. You have got to try this. It is so good. I bet it will become an instant favorite. I think you would really love it. I sure do. And it was really easy. You don't need expensive stuff to, to cook. You really don't. And that was one thing I wanted to tell you. Um, if you're intimidated by the stuff, you have to buy like hand mixers and pans and stuff. You don't have to go out there and buy the most expensive stuff. You really don't. Um, now, if, you're, if you do a lot of baking every day, and I know people who do, they go ahead and invest in more expensive mixers and things like that because they get a lot of use. I get that. But if you're like me, 
and you just bake stuff like this occasionally, you can get like a $25 or $30 hand mixer, and that will do pretty much anything you need to do, no problem. And you can go find less expensive pans, or you could borrow some from somebody. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of ways you could do it less expensively. You don't have to go buy the most expensive stuff, because I don't. You don't have to. So, and you can make awesome stuff like this with a little $11 Walmart bunt pan and my little $25 hand mixer that I think also came from Walmart like a year ago. So yeah, you can do it. I know you can. And I highly recommend you try this recipe. It's, it makes the whole house smell good and it's a yummy cake too. So you definitely have to try the Kentucky butter cake. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see the spectacular cake today. I love it and now my house smells good too. Thank you so much for being here. I really hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.